Good morning. I am Jean Brashani, and I am with you in this Delphic spirit today from Tempio di Danza, the mother house of the Isidore Duncan International Institute, situated directly on the granite foundation of the Shuanggong Ridge, believed to be the oldest rock formation on the earth. In the beautiful mountainous area of the Hudson Valley in New York, Together we are en route to Delphi and the Delphic Games, where sunlight strums the lyre. We have begun our journey toward the sacred way, near the breathing spaces that lay between the gleaming Phaedrides and the Pleistos Gorge, those upper and lower worlds, transcendent and chthonic, to light the Delphic flame, to rediscover archetypal presences, and artistic impulses, preternatural and refined. To meet Apollo, Dionysus, the Maenads, the Muses, on the terrain of the ancient Pythia herself. Seeking to sanctify all of our music and our dances as Plato would have it. To find beauty in that enchanted gasp for air and the clarity that bears the Delphic Estetis. We approach the temple of Apollo to ask the question and to answer in deeds the soul-bending riddles at the place where philosophy began in wonderment, where to our ancestors traveled far for wisdom and illumination, and to know the topos on which to stand in search of a right rhythm for existence, that we might seek to merge art to sport and all to life in contests, great, small, and enduring, envisioning and crafting of the mythopoetic plane, one's individual myth, while that of our culture as well, to open a new chapter in the Book of the Muses, that original tome in which the sum of all learning resides. We come also to return Isadora to the dancing grounds of Parnassus, for it was she who chose the site not long before her death for a Delphic Games festival house as base for preparations on behalf of the first reinstatement in modern time. She, whose father, a poet, had prophetically proclaimed during her childhood that Greece will be living Greece once more. Did he know in oracular voice of her crucial role then and always for the dream that was Helas's Delphi? She had heard the clear call of divinity to create a language of the soul from her earliest years as in seeking the source of spiritual expression that would flow through the channels of the body, that body knowingly made up of all the elements of nature to reveal nature's great secret rules in a divine continuity, giving to all of nature its beauty and its life. In studying the antique and its treasury in myth, theater, art, and ideas, her fervent wish was to steep myself in the spirit underlying them in order to discover the secret of the ecstasy in them, putting myself into touch with the feelings that their gestures symbolized and in taking my soul back to the mystic sources of their rapture. I have found again, she continues, the secret of beauty, neither Greek nor antique, but the spontaneous expression of my soul lifted up by beauty. She sought to bring to life the ancient ideal, not by copying or imitating, but by breathing its life and recreating it in oneself. Isidora knew well Plato's dictum, the dance, of all the arts is the one that most influences the soul. Dancing is divine, and its nature is the gift of God's. Acknowledging this, she accepted the mandate to change form and character according to the decree 
of the immortal gods. And in these forces that she received inwardly before giving them outwardly, so was her art born, not simply a school of dance, but a school of life, a school to unite anew the arts and the artists, beseeching them to accomplish this miracle of love and a school to express what is the most moral, healthful, and beautiful in art, stating, this is the mission of the dancer, and to this I dedicate my life. Soon we arrive in Tanagra procession, on paths where truths step up to paradigms of experience, calibrated in a measure that is human. Five gestural motifs occur repeatedly, shifting in stances, fueled by emotion into motion. From the namesake figurines of old that Isadora studied in museums, she brings to life statements on selfhood, personhood to be shared. She summons up attention, intention, direction, and awareness for action to, toward, and with the natural and the other for a sense of the beautiful. Herein we trace the Ars Viva, the art of life, and make of it a sensory map of the world for being and becoming increasingly human, building newborn dignity and human values to grow in scale, dimension, intensity, and quality. To right, to left, in detail, in wholeness, for art and for life's sake, we are brought a testament to foundation, expression, crystallization, revelation, the earth's grounding, the sleep and dream of the underworld, the divine's beneficent reaches. For Aristotle, the use of art is to frame the ordinary into the extraordinary. And in Tanagra I, there is the framing of identity and the staking of a claim for autos, the self, so that as Rumi has stated, wherever one stands, one is the soul of that place. The Greeks defined barriers and boundaries, giving order and meaning to both sacred and profane. Thus in Tanagra too, without delay, we meet strife, the father of all, within the foundry of the body and the soul, in the agon, the struggle, the contest. That which moves us by means of the greater tension to the greater potential. While to lyric exaltation, the eternal and divine point of view in Tanagra III moves Peteron, the wing, in flight to craft a soul in flight for many a message is received in the air in order to produce the sublime. In Isidore's dance, each pose, each posture is a declaration on the possible for the movement of the universe concentrated in an individual and nowhere more perceptibly than in the lying down and rising do we sight the apparition of our motion into stillness and the miracle of our stillness into motion. Until, in Tanagra 4, the kindling of desire for what surrounds is visited upon the dancer like an angel of annunciation unto a mortal. And we surmise once again that all is right with the world in the act of glaucopis, the all-seeing vision. When beauty itself stuns, in Tanagra 5, rich garments adorn to fall. And we touch the place of the beautiful, the kalos, or risk never being touched at all, to partake of the beautiful, that we too might become imagination without end, only to step farther and to reach back more than ever to the reserves 
of Athena Pronoia in her triumph of the human spirit, where pain, illness, and loss are her labors and witnesses to the living mystery. And where meaning is wrested from the primordial fire to become again the Delphic flame. And now, may this Delphic preview begin with gratitude to our prime movers in Delphi, in Athens, in Washington, and to the vast number of our contributors living and working for the Delphic ideal in artistic and scholarly alliance as ambassadors of concord, accord, and harmony. With all of our thanks, Thank you.